I, I mean, I, I, I know of, like I, I talked to other folks uh, who yes. are doing similar things that I'm doing on the call center side, um, who they have agents who have written 400, 500, 600, 800 thousand dollars a year, lat like this past year, correct like premium, just like on the phone. Yeah. So like, if that's all you want to do, like you could sit at home and work two or three days that's a week amazing. and make an amazing income, help a lot of people get exactly what they're looking for, something that's going to continue their legacy in a positive way. If something, not if, when, right? Yeah. We're talking yeah. about final expense. Yeah. When something happens to them, now their legacy gets to go on in a very positive way. Their family's not having to do a GoFundMe. Or put exactly. the little jar at the at the convenience store. Like we all see it. It's crazy. And like that doesn't have to have to fifty fifty dollars a month, sixty dollars a month, and that does not have to happen. Yeah. Right. And now you get to take a legacy forward in a positive way. Mm. And we as agents get to work in this industry and do that and make an amazing income, have time with our families, take care of our family, get life insurance yes. ourselves, uh, and take care of our families in an amazing way and show our children what's possible. Yeah. You know, so it's, I, incredible. It's, it's an amazing time for our industry. It, it, that's that's why. Like, I mean, the question is like, why, why am I? Why do I still go into the field? Because it, it's it's not that much time, yeah. right? And I'm doing an amazing thing for my, the clients that I'm working with, and I'm able to show and Being teach others yeah. how to do what we're doing. That's how you grow. Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast live every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Central Center Time. I'm your host, Cody Askins. Today, I got a super special guest. I'm talking, this cat is one of the most intentional people I've ever met in the insurance industry about exploding his business, caring about people, and accomplishing a lot along the way. Mr. Edward Pritchett, all the way from Puerto Rico, buddy. It's awesome to have you on the podcast. Good to be here, man. Good to be here. Yeah, dude, I really appreciate you being a part of this thing. We're up, we're out, we're setting up right now for eight percent virtual. Yep. We're going to stream this thing to thousands of agents around the world. We got agents from Botswana and Puerto Rico and Philippines and Canada and everywhere else registered, and we're super excited for it. So I appreciate you coming off from Puerto Rico to pour into the audience and to share your success with them. So thank you for doing that. Yes, sir. Yeah. If, if, if a little bit of my success can help someone else find theirs, I mean, that's that's really why we're doing this thing. I love it, brother, I love it. Um, well, you have an insane, impressive resume. Like you got a lot going on. <laughs> I think you may have, before I get into it, I think you may have more, you, you, you're the first person I've met that I can say, like really met and like got to know, that I can say definitely has more going on than me. And I feel like I got a lot going on. <laughs> You, like, definitely, you definitely have a lot going on, that's but, for sure. But dude, I don't know how you keep up. Like, you got a lot, and it's awesome to see. Good people. That's all I can say. Good people and a good wife. Yes. <laughs> those, especially, those, those, those two things. Yeah, those, man. Especially those two the things good wife. make it work. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so Edwards from Puerto Rico. Um, number one agency with us, uh, Symmetry Financial Group? I, I battle it out with the, me, me and one other individual. We, we, we battle back and close, forth. We, we battle back and forth. Senior partner? Yes. Um, you have an unbelievable story, and I want to really get into that. We're going to spend some time really diving into that. Um, Why did you agree to do the interview, first of all? I'm kind of curious, because <laughs> you really don't need it. Um, so I, I've been watching you for, for quite a while now, uh, as, as we've discussed, and yeah. uh, seeing what you're doing for the industry and, and getting this kind of information out to agents, like you said, worldwide. I mean, insurance isn't just sold in America. Correct. Insurance is sold all across the world. And um, I was sharing with the agent this morning, the principles of success for insurance are the same things that have been working since Frank Betcher wrote about it and mm -hmm. what he was doing back in the 1920s, right? Yes. Like no, nothing's really changed, uh, but we just need to hear it in different ways. We need to um, experience different stories, find those different people that we can connect with to yeah. see what's possible. And so uh, in, in watching what you've been doing uh, with 8% Nation and, and, and what you've been pouring out, you know, I, I felt that it was definitely time to to do something similar. And you've already built an amazing platform uh, for that. And if my story can help someone else yes. uh, connect uh, my representation, right? Like it's it's February, it's Black History Month yes. and African-Americans are not represented very well in this industry. And True. if these stories uh, can help others say, you know what, if he can do it, I can do it, yes. right? If he can start there, I, I can get there as well. And yeah. that's the power of this industry. I mean, there's True. so much wealth in the industry that we're in. Um, and it's, it is pretty much 
held kind of at the top, yeah. but we're seeing it being democratized in a way that we haven't mm. probably ever uh, for the life insurance industry. Yeah. And this is definitely a time that people who are looking to, to make a move into this industry or who are in this industry and they're just like, you know what, I'm not getting the success that I feel like I should be. Now the information, thanks to people like yourself, yeah, thanks, it's getting out there. Uh, and people can, if they take it and use it, man, I mean, it, it's going to revolutionize our industry even more so than it already is being revolutionized. So all those reasons and, and just because of who you are, I was like, yeah, no, I definitely want to be on, on, on this this platform. I definitely want to share uh, my story. And, and hopefully, again, if a little bit of what I've gone through, mm. uh, some of the things that I've learned along the way help someone else, then we're all going to be great uh, greater for it right yeah my dad totally. always my dad says it all the time uh i think if you talk to he's an agent as well okay um and he has an organization he says this quote all the time but he says you know the rising tide raises all ships mm. and i mean that's so true so good um and we just want to make sure that you know we're equipping people with here's how to build the best ship right and yes. here's here's how to take advantage of the rise that's happening in our industry right now yeah i love it so good as you guys are watching today i want you to be stay engaged i want you to take some notes i can promise you the best is yet to come this is gonna be an unbelievable interview possibly one of the probably one of the best we've ever done we've had marlon and nate and jeremy whitaker a bunch of amazing people um on but i can promise you this is gonna be a special one so make sure you stay engaged i would love to see in comments below like what your favorite pieces are make sure you like this and if the interview is as good as i think at the very end you gotta promise me right now that you're gonna take a second and share this out to someone in the world that needs to hear this message okay so i would love to start with um you have a what i've seen is that you have a huge heart for people you really care about people you have a lot of, a lot of amazing people in your life which is super important where's that like connection and heart for people and care for this industry where's that come from has it always been there well I would say it's definitely always been a part of, of who I am. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> we are a collection of the experiences that we have throughout our life. And, you mm. know, I was blessed to have amazing parents, uh, grew up in a great community, uh, got the opportunity to see what it looks like when others lift one another up yes. uh, and how much that can uh, be beneficial and helpful. And I know along my way, like there were times um, I was talking with my business coach actually this past Wednesday. Uh, thinking back to my college years and mm. yeah, I, I had some turbulent times, you know, and, and even post college, really college was yeah. OK. But, you know, um, in 2005, uh, the summer that I graduated from school, uh, my mother passed away. Uh, mm -hmm. She was 51 years old. I'm the oldest of four siblings and um, it, it rocked our family. You know, it, it, it was yeah. totally unexpected. Uh, she passed away from a brain aneurysm. And, um, you know, it was during that time that my life shifted in a direction that obviously wasn't planning for. And I, I went to some, to, to some dark places, right? Like, you yeah. know, I was just getting out of college. I thought I was getting ready to go off and start working in Boston and do all these things. But, you know, I wound up needing to come back home and, and, and being there for my family, for my younger siblings. Um, and it was the community around us that helped us get through that period of time. It yeah. was my mother's life insurance agent mm. who surprised our family and said, oh, yeah, Edith took out these two policies. And because of those two policies, our family was able to stay in the home that we'd lived wow. in since 1988. Right. Without having we, it was dual income household. Yes. You know, my, my mother was a, a nurse at the VA hospital. She had a very strong income coming in. My dad was doing well as, as also. But yeah. without her income, which income disappears as soon as you pass away, right? Correct. There's not many jobs out there where if you pass away, they're like, oh, we'll keep paying you guys the income that, you know, your dearly departed person uh, was, was being paid. Like that doesn't happen. And it was things like that. And then even as I kind of struggled to, through that period of time, you know, that's going through loss, going through grief, um, responding like a, a 23 year old responds, right? Yeah. Um, it was, it was other people. It, it was mm. the good people that still saw the best in me that slowly allowed me to get to the point where, you know, when I was 27, I finally found my way into this industry uh, and then, you know, found my then girlfriend, now my wife, awesome. um, you know, the partners that I have with the company that I'm working with now and the mentors that I started to, to mm -hmm. acquire because of that. And even when I 
the outside didn't look like it was worth investing in me. It was like, man, you got you got some rough edges here. We need sure. to take care of some of these things. Um, uh, and especially, I mean, <clears throat> I, I really think there's a, a special place in heaven for partners that can see someone through a time like that. Uh, yes. And I know my wife was was someone who she saw something more in me at that time than I did. And it was that care from others that allowed me to to step into who I really could become. And so it would be, I mean, unwise, foolish, bad on the karmic scale for me yeah. not to want to give that back to whomever I can. Mm. Uh, and we're in such a great industry to be able to do that. I mean, with our clients, yes. we're able to do that and helping them to establish and build legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, with agents that we work with, we're able to see people rise like literally out of poverty and create a life that they never imagined True. for themselves and, and their children, right? So like there's so many opportunities that we have to be able to give back because of this industry. And, and that's where it starts for me, right? Yeah. Is I, I have to look back and if I don't pay it forward, then I'm, you know, it's kind of like I'm, I'm spitting in the face of everyone who did it for me. And I just, I, yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that person. Yeah, that's so good. And the income, nice thing about insurance is the income continues even when you're gone. Yeah, right? no, is, I, that's why. I mean, if something happened to me tomorrow, yeah. right? my family is going to continue to get an income from what I've built for the past 11 yeah. years. Insurance income, real estate, investments, uh, investments, policies, life insurance, policies that I have, yeah. <laughs> right? Like yeah. I, I promise you, if, if anyone's got all, more than a hundred grand sitting if, in if a life insurance policy. If anyone's overinsured, I'm certainly overinsured and I'm working yes. on being even more overinsured yes. because I mean, that's what these policies do. I mean, these policies right. can create new legacies for, for, a yeah. family, right? Yeah. If if you're willing to make that investment, and for me that's an investment, it's gonna work for me right now. And while I'm, I'm not planning on going anywhere anytime right. soon. Right. But it's it's working for me right now. But then, uh, if something were to happen, you know, my family's gonna have something even greater than what I've done yet, right? And like that, that's the thing. The the reason that especially entrepreneurs, um, business builders, insurance agents, yeah. the reason to get so much more insurance is because you're working towards something and you're probably not there yet. <laughs> so I know what I'm going for. So I have life insurance, not based on my current status. I have life insurance based on where I'm planning on being. Right. Yes. And so if something were to happen to me on the way there, mm. my family gets to get what I was going for. Right. Yes. You know, and, and that's, that's something that w what other product out there can give that to people. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so true. Um, you said a few things I'm going to come back to in a little bit that were okay. really, really strong, by the way. Okay, stay tuned. Um, I want to walk through your story. Um, okay. Who was Edward Pritchett growing up? You mentioned college. I'd love to know more about that. You mentioned Boston for work. Like, a, who was who was Edward? Where'd you grow up? Um, where were you born? Um, <clears throat> born Mobile, Alabama. Uh, okay. So if you, you're hearing the accent, sometimes it comes out. I, I don't I, catch it, actually. I, I, I can back it off sometimes. Okay, you know? okay. I, I think living in Puerto Rico here recently is, is I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit of a, a, a Puerto Rican accent every now and again. But, you know, okay. anyway, it's, it's, it's become muddled over the years. Yeah. But uh, born in Mobile, Alabama, grew up in Asheville, North Carolina or right outside of Asheville, North Carolina. Mm. Um, and that's where that, those were my formative years for sure. And um, uh, went to middle school, high school there. Again. Who was who was Edward Pritchett in high school, man? Let's say like <laughs> I, I sixteen. Was, <laughs> I was the overachiever for sure. I, okay. Like I, I've always, my my parents, my grandparents, they really, they were the the kind of people who said you can be whatever you want to be, right? Yes. Um, it, it's what I continue to try to do for my four children now. It helps is so to much when people pour in them, like that. Yeah. If, yes. if you're just saying like you can do it, like what do you want to do? I, I remember. Uh, wanting to go to to this summer camp or that summer camp or do these things. And, you know, coming up, my parents didn't have all the money in the world, right? So it was like we had to, they had to make, there were some budgetary issues that had to be resolved, yeah. but they found a way. Um, and mm -hmm. in doing that, they let me know that I was worth it, right? Uh, they, they I, I saw my, my mother sacrifice and struggle. I saw my dad go out night after night after night trying to build his businesses. Yeah. Um, and I knew that, yeah, there, there's part of it that was for them, but mm -hmm. it was so that we could have more, that we could have the things that would elevate us to the biggest that our potential could be. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I, I heard that over and over. And, you know, I can remember when we're, when I'm thinking about, like, college and, and where I chose to go, 
uh, one of my, uh, it was a fourth grade teacher who said, you know, Yale University is the best university in the world. And, you know, wow. Edward, you could, you, you, could go, you could go to school like that, right? Like this is this, you know, fourth grade kid in Asheville, North Carolina. Mm. Um, you know, that's like, I didn't even know where like Yale nine was. nine years old, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. nine, yeah. 10 years old. I didn't even know where the, where the school was at the time. Uh, all I had known was the Southeast, right? And, and, and really just North Carolina and, and Alabama. Um, and someone to speak into your life like that. Yes. Uh, and then I can remember that set in motion. You know, I was like, okay, so I got to hmm. have good grades. I got to be part of the different clubs. I got to, you know, student government. Uh, you know, I got into marching band. I was a drum major. You know, I was a wrestler. I, I, I ran track. Like I, you know, was I did all the things. What did you not do? <laughs> well, I mean, the, the whole goal, right, was like yeah, I, yeah. I knew I, I needed to get to this elite school and I had to have a good resume, right? Yes. So, and it wasn't just about the the good resume, but being the best I could be, yep. right? Um, well, when did that become <clears> the goal? As far as school was, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, fourth, fifth grade. Like yeah. a, after she said good. that, that became yeah. the go like that was the school I was going to. Um, you know, I, I applied to all the elite North Carolina schools, the Duke, the Chapel Hill, and all that. Yes. Um, you know, my dad went to Auburn, so of course I had to apply to Auburn as well. Yes. Um, and you know, I got into those schools, but always, you know, going to Yale was that goal from this. One, it was one, it was probably one, was one comment, right? Mm -hmm. One comment that she made yeah. on one day, and that became the goal. And I can remember telling some uh, some friends in high school, you know, junior year when everybody's applying, like mm -hmm. where, where you're applying, where you're wanting to go. And I can remember telling a couple of friends, you know, I'm, I'm going to Yale University, like that's that's where I'm going to go. Wow. And I can remember one of them in particular, I, I still remember his name to this day, he was like, no one from here goes there. There's no way you're getting mm. in there. Like, it's not going to happen. That made the resolve even stronger, right? Like, it's like, no, right. I'm definitely going now. And I, I can remember wow. when everybody got the the letters, the acceptance letters and stuff like that, you know, getting mine. And I didn't rub it in his face per se, but I, I made sure he was there when I opened up that letter. Wow. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. So that, that was, that was kind of, you know, that, that drive has definitely been something, again, that was instilled by the community, the family that I grew up in, yes. um, nurtured by great teachers a along mm -hmm. the way. Um, and then, it, you know, it led to that being kind of like, that was a culminating event. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, I try to continue to, to, to channel a lot of that, even as I'm doing what I'm doing today. Yeah, it's amazing how important it is in life where people speak into you and then also then you start to believe it and start to like speak it yourself, you know, like, like the teacher as an example. Um, do you remember his or her name back then? The teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Reed. Mrs. Reed. Yeah, I, I remember. I, 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 I always Pritchett. remember her name. <laughs> Who knows how a few decades ago or whatever, right? I don't yeah. know how old you are. But, yeah. Um, and he took that and thought, you know what? Maybe she's right. Like, like they, we all have those moments in our life and remembering those and then channeling those is super cool to hear those stories. So thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Um, when you, you mentioned you're overachiever. Was it just that, okay, I'm an overachiever because I knew my resume had to be strong to go to Yale? Like, what were the other, like, an overachiever in sports? Uh, I, I wish I could say I was an overachiever Okay, okay, okay. I was good. I, I was yeah. solid. Like, yeah. I, I, I was good enough where... What was your best sport? Uh, wrestling. Um, okay. Wrestling was definitely... Remind me not to get into it with this guy, okay? <laughs> Wrestling was my best sport, and and I did continue to wrestle um, while I was at, at Yale, mm. um, up until you know had some some injuries junior year. You, you push it sometimes, but sure, sure. Um, yeah, I, I I think it wasn't about being an overachiever for achievement's sake. Uh, it was maximizing that potential, right? Like it was hearing other people say you can do this or this is possible. And seeing a lot of people choosing to kind of just either go with the flow or be like everybody else or, you know, they, they could have done it and then they, they lived with regret afterwards. I mean, yeah. somehow I started to connect that even at a very early age and I just didn't want that to be me. I didn't yes. want that to be my story because I did see a lot of examples uh, of. Well, I don't know how, how personal I want to get on that one, but, uh, you know, you, you go to the family reunion and, and people yeah. say, oh, you know, you're just like your uncle so-and-so, mm. you know, he, he could have been all this. And then you see uncle so-and-so and you're like, oh man, I don't want to mm. end up like uncle so-and-so. Yeah. Um, and I chose at that point in time, I was like, I'm not going to let that be 
the story that's written. I'm not going to wow. let the story of regret be the one that's written for me or that I write in my life. So like, I have to push, I have yeah. to achieve uh, because I, I got to see how much can I do? Like, I don't know what my limits are. Uh, I don't want to have limits. I, I yeah. do want to continue to push forward um, and do new things. It's the reason that the other businesses that I've begun and, and started and, and growing is because I, I see that there is more that's out there. You know, we, we read and we see the stories, uh, you know, whether you're reading Newsweek or People or, you know, sure. obviously on the Internet, everybody's posting about how great, great their lives are. Right. Yes. Uh, but the people who, you know, they really are achieving amazing things in this world. Right. And uh, you you look at them and most people, I think, say, well, yeah, that's that's them. You know, that that could be, like, why couldn't it be me? Why yeah. couldn't it be you? You know, and, mm -hmm. and the only thing that separates that is what you actually believe. You know, if, if you get to that point and sometimes it, you know, it, it's the uh, both of my, my siblings or two of two of my younger siblings um, were all American track athletes. Wow. Uh, my 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 brother who went to Tennessee, he's a, a three time all American uh, in the four by one relay he ran for Tennessee. Wow. And uh, I can remember. Like I always wish I was as fast as Matthew. Uh, Matthew's just he's, <laughs> he's he's smoking. He's just fast. Yeah. Um, and I can remember at a very early age, you know, our, our parents teaching us to write what we want on the mirror, right? And like he'd write these times and these goals and stuff. His goals were around track, and and it's how amazing how he was able to just accomplish again and again and again uh, because he just he just kept saying that he kept saying that over and over again. I kind of where I was like, man, why didn't I say that I was a, a better wrestler? <laughs> I just, I just that that wasn't the path that I, I took. I, I yep. definitely said I'm going to be the best at certain things, and I, I went down another path. But seeing that happen in his life, um, and knowing that it, it, that ability to manifest based on what you really believe, what yep. you kind of, it's the crazy people a little bit, right? The it people is. Who like they 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 repeat something often enough to themselves. You're just like, why is that person just? They just keep doing the same thing. Uh, and then you they just get better and better and better and then Correct. you know they start separate now and then you don't hear about them for you know two three years the next thing yeah. you know you, you see the story right yeah. um and and that's really being able to separate out like that it's something that i i, I look for in in my life you know it's, yes. it's being able to find ways to make that happen for myself using belief as as the yeah. the the energy the source for that yeah yeah it's a core belief i mean i i, I literally had um we had Brad Lee on our podcast, uh, or I'm sorry, our uh, power player uh, mastermind last night. And he said something that literally you just said that I wanted to read that I had wrote down in my notes. And he said, to do something different, you must believe something different. Mm. Yeah. Literally what, I mean, not word for word, but identical to literally what you just said a couple minutes ago, which is amazing. Yep. Um, you mentioned um, wrestling. Did you, re did you wrestle in high school? Did you wrestle at Yale? Yeah. Well, it was a, a club team there at Yale. Okay. Okay. So well, what's, we, well keep going. So, it, it, so it's division three, right? So, yeah, I mean, but still, though, it's, it's funny. <laughs> I ask him like, oh, did, you know, you're, you're an overachiever. Were you an overachiever in sports? Wrestled in college, but no, right? But that's a testament to like how much you want to overachieve and where you really want to be because – I, I played basketball in a little bit of Bible college. Like it, it was D3 of like the Christian, you know, <laughs> association, right? Like, it, you know, it ain't the same, but I have regrets of like, I could have done more. Yeah. I made a hundred grand at 27 insurance, but I could have done more at, in college at, at a, a collegiate level, right? At an athletic level. And it's interesting for you to say, cause you are a natural overachiever, but you didn't, you wrestled in college at Yale, but didn't feel like that was overachieving, you know? That's you though. That 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 that, that was kind of that that was my side hustle of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there you go. There I, you I, was, go. I was there for the I was there for the academics, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, what I was doing in, in student government and and things of that nature, uh, and that was just like you know that 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 kept the body kept the body physically going right. You know? Yes, I love it. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about too is it was you. It was, let's say like okay, you shift from high school to college. You're at Yale, right? And and it's crazy. You literally like said you were going to go to Yale every day for a decade. And then it comes true, right? Like that's the power of speaking stuff into life. Um, then you're at Yale. What was the focus? Let's like, what was the, what, what, like the whole goal was to get to Yale, right? You get there. Were there other goals or did they start to manifest? Like, how does that look? G good, good observation there, because that's, I think what set up my twenties in, in not so good of a way. 
Right. Okay. Because <clears throat> that was the end goal. Yes. And I got there. And mm. where to go next wasn't very clear. I, I, I didn't have the mentorship for what I needed to do after. So, yes. you know, a lot of people go to college to, you know, get a degree so you can get out and get a job. Uh, and so I had the, the short term go, OK, I'm going to get a chemical engineering degree because that's what the degree my dad had. Mm. Uh, our family had an engineering firm and, you know, maybe okay. I could help out there. But then, you know, it was a a good career. It was a good job that was going to, you know, I could make some strong income. Right. Yeah. But I didn't have I, I looked around and I saw, you know, my contemporaries there in school and a lot of them had a game plan for what they were going to do after, you know, whether it was going into law going in, you know, they had a specific business that they wanted to start. They wanted to do something on the humanitarian scale. They, they had a, a very clear defined goal for what this college experience was going to do. My goal was just to get to Yale. Yeah. And so then I got there and I'll be honest, you know, the first, my first semester I did okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the, the pressure started to get to me. I started to struggle with some class because like, now I'm taking, not that Inca high school, amazing high school. Sure. Yeah. Different level of, of Dude, you start work. going to Yale. Oh my God! And <laughs> it was, it was everyone's impressive. And everyone's impressive. Exactly. A everybody is valedictorian, and I wasn't even the valedictorian, right? Like I would think I was salutatorian or something like that. So it's like you you get there, you achieve that goal, and if you don't have where you're going next, what mm -hmm. will happen is you'll start to flounder, right? Uh, you'll you'll start to digress. Uh, you'll you'll actually start to go backwards uh, without having a path or you know, a destination to move towards. Totally. And and that was one of the things that I think um, that I, I struggled with during my college years. It was an amazing experience. Uh, I, I, I did some great things there. I, I really enjoyed my time there. Um, met had some great fr lifelong friends uh, and learned so much. Mm -hmm. Learned so much about the world. Like it expanded my vision as far as what's possible in this world. Uh, awesome. But it took it took a minute, you know. I yeah. I, I went through my uh, days and confused moment. Like I didn't sure. do it in high school, thankfully. That that's what allowed me to get to Yale. But I I did have some days and confused moments um, a, as I was going through that process. But even during that, I think the the thing that kept me moving forward is, you know, I was still someone who wanted to to give back a lot. Yeah. Uh, so I did a lot of um, you know uh, mentorship and and things of that nature uh, while I was there, and, and that kept me at least on a path like I, I didn't just yeah. go go off into the wilds um and then you know leading up to i, I was able to get through uh you know the coursework i was able to, to graduate with my engineering degree awesome. um barely right like i, I had to fight like it okay. was <clears throat> i think when you're when you have a very clear goal uh and and you're doing things uh along the right path it gets to the point where it just it's not easy, but it feels very natural, mm. right? Like you, you can get into a flow. Like we, you, we talk to athletes totally. who get into a flow or stuff like that. And what I found and what should have woke me up at the time, and I just didn't know this then, is I didn't, I, I didn't feel that. I didn't feel that natural state, right, whenever I was going through coursework. And I, was, I always, why, why is it such a struggle to, to get up and go to this class or go to that class or, 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 or push through these things? And it was because, again, I, there was no, I wasn't going anywhere, right? I didn't know where I was going, so yeah. I didn't have that firm reason. The belief wasn't there anymore, right? Um, and if you find your, yourself where you're struggling with things like that, uh, and I think this is for anyone who's watching, if you're in that place where you're just like, man, this is, everything is just so hard. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just so difficult. Um, I, I don't feel a, a desire to do, then maybe you don't believe in where you're going. Mm. And if you can really get that, like whatever it is that you're supposed to do, yes. if you can, if you know that for certain yeah. and you can get that belief um, to that place where everything that you do, the actions that you take on a day to day basis yeah. match that, then it may be hard. It may be difficult. Correct. But you're going to find those flows. You're going to find that joy. Yeah. In what you're going to find happiness yeah right at least you feel like you're going somewhere yeah well you're going somewhere and you're going somewhere that you want to go you're not yeah. being told or coerced or or mm. pushed that way by others right because we don't typically do a lot when we're we're forced to do it or we don't yeah. bring our best when we're forced to do something and if you can't find that in yourself with what you're doing 
you may need to reevaluate what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, find something that you do have a passion about. And for some of us, we have to go through those periods. We all have to, not some of us, all of us totally. have to go through those periods where you may just not know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, but don't give up. Yeah. Continue to look for that thing that, that gives you passion, that you can believe in, because that's where you start to find that, that flow, that energy. Uh, all the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis these days, there are times I get tired just because sure. it's a, it is a lot, but I, I'm excited about it. I get to yeah. wake up tomorrow and move it forward another notch and, and take it to this next place. And I know where that end goal is and I'm excited about getting there. But what I now know is when I get there, I better go ahead and be working on like what, what's next. So now this, yes. this isn't life is a, is a journey. I'm not going to stop this thing. Like mm -hmm. I'll stop when I, I'm dead. Right. Yeah. Um, so having that, that next place, that next thing to go, but in being able to enjoy it along the way, yes. right? Like, you know, you and you're enjoying it along the way when you can find happiness in the challenges, in the hard work, yeah. um, in the frustrating details that go along. Uh, so that's, you know, I, it's one of those things that I, I think most people who kind of get caught in that trap where they're just stuck in a place, they, they don't know where they want to go. They don't have a belief in something bigger than just today. You know, that they're just coasting along. They're, uh, you know, doing what mom or dad told them or what society or Facebook or Twitter or something else told them that they should be doing at this point in time, yes. you know? Yes, yes. You mentioned Boston for work. So we were graduated at this point. Graduated, um, was going to go work with uh, a a consulting firm uh, in Boston okay. for chemical engineering or something different. No, so it, they were just going to use my chemical engineering expertise, Got right? It. So it. it was more than consulting. I I never I did learn very quickly that I did not want to be a chemical engineer. Okay, how did uh, you figure that out so quick? <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, quick four years. So that's not really that not quick, super right? Quick, but but. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm very good at math. I love science, um, but the the day to day stuff that chemical engineers are supposed to do. Yes. Um, I, I learned during my classes that that really wasn't, <laughs> you know, I should have probably changed my major at a certain point in time, but, you know, I, I kind of got, you know, headstrong. I'm going to do this no matter what. Um, what would you have changed it to, hypothetically? That's a good question. That's a really good question. If I could have chosen any degree... I probably would have done something more like biology or chemistry. Okay. You know, science. Just, it's, yeah. yeah I, I love the science aspect. Uh, at a certain point, the math and chemical engineering, it just like, it got too yeah. theoretical for yeah. me. I was like, oh, this is, this is a bit much. Uh, when you start talking about laminar flow and how particles are moving around, yeah. it just, it, it gets a little, a little, a little deep there. It is amazing how much math helps in business though, in it, general. True. You know? Which I, I'm very appreciative yeah. of that. Like yeah. there, there's very little business math that conf that confuses. Well, there's, I don't, I can't think of any right now that really wow. confuses me. Well, just because the, the level of math that I had to take Correct. Uh, to find, to get that degree, I mean, even though I didn't like it, I still had to pass, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Yeah. I understand it on a, on a certain level, uh, but I couldn't, I didn't get that, that love, that pat, like some of my colleagues, you know, are, engineering group, I think there was only like eight people that got a, a chemical engineering degree in my graduating wow. class. Um, so it was a small group of people, but there are individuals in that group that are doing chemical, amazing work in the engineering field today that like they loved it. Like mm. it, you, you, it was, a, it was a, a passion of theirs. That, that was their belief that they were gonna be yeah. the best at that. Do you and think that I, was part of why you felt like you didn't overachieve in college per se because of that? Because it wasn't like a true desire to go do that. You just kind of thought it was the path you should take? Yeah, no, I, I would think that that's, uh, that's a part of that. I mean, you still went to Yale, let's cry out loud, but. <laughs> well, I, I, I achieved the high school dream, like the middle school, high school that's dream. Right. That was able that's to right. achieve that one. That's right. So. So after, um, okay, so, so consulting company. So consulting company and, um, you know, as I said, uh, my mother passed away that summer. Mm. Um, so I was actually finishing up um, some final things in uh, New Haven, Connecticut, uh, and got the call that uh, she, was, she was sick and she was in the hospital and, and flew home. Uh, and then that, that definitively changed everything, you know, like oh. that was where it was just like, uh, I, can't, I can't move away. You know, I think my two youngest siblings um, uh, were in eighth grade seventh or eighth grade at the time. Wow. Um, and uh, I had two siblings that were in college. Um, five total or more? Yeah, five, five in total. Okay. And, um, you know, I just, I, I knew that 
at, at that point in time where I was needed the most was going to mm -hmm. be back in Asheville, um, making sure that the family continued on. Family has always been and always will be. It's just, it's just an extremely important thing to me, uh, instilled from the beginning. Hundred um, percent. So you know that that's that's what came first, and I figured I'd. I'd, I'd figure it out, you know, come come home, help out, get things back settled, and then we'll we'll go from there. So And then what happened? Um stayed in Asheville. Uh, was actually helping to raise my my two youngest siblings uh, uh with my father and uh lived lived at our family house for a little while while before then, you know, moving out because I had to get my own place because, you know, I'm twenty three. I can't be yes. can't be living at home. <laughs> um but but stayed there, did that for uh a few years, tried to make things work uh in the engineering world uh with my my dad's company at the time. And that's when uh you know two thousand seven, two thousand eight Great Recession came along. <clears throat> it decimated um our, our family's firm. You know, oh. like uh the, the business started to dry up, things just got tough and tight and uh, you know eventually that had to be shut down. And I started to look for other engineering jobs, but again, this is the Great Recession. There weren't yes. that many other engineering jobs saying, yeah, come on over. Yeah. Um, and that's when I got contacted by someone about being a life insurance agent. I was like, okay, wow. let, me, let me check this out. Like I need a job What was your now. first thought though? Um, this will be temporary. <laughs> right? <laughs> I first thought was like, all right, let me do this so I can yeah. make some income so I can pay my bills. Um, and now you're one of the goats of the life insurance industry, by the way. <laughs> well, still, still working on that the official title. Though. There we go. There we go. I love it. That's good. But um, yeah, I mean, it it was just to to make an income uh, initially, and for two years I worked with a captive agency. Yep. Um, and you know, it was family and friends, door to door. I got handed an old book of business, like yeah, go resell to all these folks. Yeah. Um, and that's probably about a year into that, I was just like there's got to be a better way to do this. Like mm -hmm. there has to be another way. That's where I start to put that engineer in mind to like, okay, how can, how can I do this differently? Yeah. You know, I, I that was when I first started looking at the uh, organization that I work with didn't do leads. So I started, okay, there's gotta be leads for, for this. Like yes. this is sales. So, you know, I yeah. got, got, got online at the, you know, and was kind of looking for like life insurance leads and, and things of that nature. And I got a, a whole bunch of those from <laughs> some dubious sources <laughs> to sure. say the least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was I was able to eke a living out, um, and I would really say eke. I, I think you know, my last year with that organization, I probably didn't make over thirty thousand wow. dollars. Like that's gr gross. Like you talk about, you know, twenty seven or was twenty seven and one hundred twenty thousand dollars in, in oh my first year. For you, yeah, twenty twenty. And, oh, yeah, I was well, twenty. Yeah, way way before. I, okay, yeah. so twenty. Um, so yeah, I was twenty seven or twenty six at the time, and. 30,000 and I was like, wow. all right, I, I gotta, gotta do something different. Yeah. So uh, by that time, economy was kind of coming back. And so mm -hmm. I started to apply for some engineering jobs, um, but I hadn't gotten any of those jobs yet and I still mm -hmm. need to make an income. So I, I was like, okay, I have this insurance license. Let me see what else is out so there. So you were thinking about being a part of the 92% for a second. I was thing. definitely, th I, was, I, I, was, I was part of the 92%, let's <laughs> yeah. just put it that way. I was part of the, I wasn't thinking about it. I was part of the 92%. Yeah. Uh, a, a struggling insurance agent wondering why in the world am I in this industry? Yes, um, which is such a cool piece to your story, by the way. You know, you can look back now. How many years ago was that? 12, yeah, 12, 13 years ago. Okay, so you're late, yeah. you're, you're I've, I've, I've mid been, to late 30s. I've been in the industry, I'm, I'm 39. I'm, 39. I'm, I'm happy to admit it, I'm, there you I'm, go. I'm happy with there 39. You go. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I got into the industry, it, I was 20, six okay. when I got into the industry. Um, so I've, I've been in now 14 years, which wow. is crazy to think uh, whenever crazy. I think about that, that amount of time. But what you've accomplished is is truly remarkable. I mean, it really is. Yeah. And and that, that goes to, you know, what happened next was I, you know, got a call out of the blue, said, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're hiring over here in the insurance industry, but we're different. It's mm. like, all right. At the time, did you think everyone's hiring or yeah did you know well, that be, okay well because so with the captive agency i worked with part i, I had risen up like making thirty thousand dollars a year i was a, a unit manager with this company right uh wow. so like I, I i had responsibilities quote unquote <laughs> uh but that responsibility was just to to have these different recruiting events all the time and bring in uh, more agents you're probably good at that though I, I did a fairly good job of that yeah i, I, I would say I, I did a good job because i i, I did have a belief 
mm -hmm. that you could make very good money in this industry. Like I, I knew that was possible. I, Were you seeing that with, in, with others? Maybe not, not with that company. Not, not in my immediate sphere, Got right? It. Like not in the branch that I worked with. Yep. Um, I did see that others were doing it. And I always am one of those people who are like, if they can do it, totally. like, I can, I can. I just got to figure out, I just haven't put all the puzzle pieces together yes. to be able to see my picture clear, clearly. Um, so, you know, I was, I was doing that, <clears throat> but looking to say, okay, while I'm waiting on this engineering job to come through, yeah. let me find somewhere that I can, uh, at least make an income, like at least right. go out and help some right. families. Um, and that's when I came across uh, for the first time Symmetry Financial Group and, mm. um, you know, talked with one of the, the company was only a year old at that time when I interviewed with wow. one of the one of the founders. How many agents were there in the beginning like that? I mean, I think at that point in time, they couldn't have had more than 50 or 60 agents at that point hey, in time. One um, of the OGs. I, 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 can, I can say that just just Tom and put me in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And, and I was able to take advantage of that. Um, because I heard from one of the, the, the owners, uh, he actually did my initial interview with them mm. and he just shared how they were doing it. Right. He was sharing the fact that they had a, a source of leads. He was sharing the fact that they had these access to the carriers and their goal is to make sure that agents are empowered to be able to help their clients out. Right. And he is actually the first person who drew out the story of like why I even considered, like, I didn't even know why I had considered insurance. Yep. Uh, but we started talking about my mother in that yes. situation. He was the first person to help me connect that wow. those dots, right? Like why I thought doing insurance would, was a good thing uh, yeah. was because of my personal experience of how insurance helped my family, Correct. right? Like I know for a fact that the house that we grew up in, we would have definitively lost it extremely quickly yes. uh, if it hadn't been for those policies that my mother had in place. Mm. You know, my father's business would have probably folded even faster if it wasn't for, I mean, she had almost half a million dollars worth of insurance wow. that came into the family. And that was, I mean, that changed the trajectory that we were yeah. going to be on. Half a million dollars versus zero. Like what, getting what, goosebumps listening to this what, too. what are the differences that that would, yeah. would make for someone in that situation? So he helped me connect that. And I think when that happened, that gave me that next goal, that that new belief that, okay, I'm not just in this just to make an income. Mm -hmm. I can actually go out and be that agent. And it was a modern woodman of America wow. agent is yeah. who my yeah, mom yeah, bought yeah. those policies from. Wow. Um, I can be that kind of person in someone else's life. Yes. You know, I can pay it forward in that way as well. And so, you know, getting leads with that organization um, and and going out and helping clients there, it, it gave me a, a fresh take on it, right? Now I actually started to go out and have, like my first week with Cemetery, I wrote $5,600 in premium. Wow. Compared to what I had been, like that was a month for me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, at the previous company. And it was just because the belief changed. How I believed about what I was doing whenever I called each one of those leads totally yep. changed. I think if I had had that same belief when I was calling the, you know, whatever kind of leads that I was getting before, yeah. I probably would have spoken with more authority, with more confidence, would have been able to connect better with the people that I was talking sure. with. So it was it was a blessing to to be introduced to that group of people and uh, to to that company, and and working with them for the past eleven years now wow. has, I mean, it's it's amazing. You know, it's not even a night and day like it's what, like. What did you earn your first year? With, with symmetry, yeah. um, I think I was around like 110, 111 uh, thousand. It's a big jump. That was a huge jump. Uh, and you're like, whoa, okay, there's something to this thing. Yeah. You can actually make money in this? Yeah. No, well, I mean, the, the first week, just getting, I think that the, the next week, like after I submitted that business, you know, yeah. most, I think all of it actually got issued that first week because I, wow. I made like $2,600, $2,700 the next week. And that was life changing. Like that, yeah. like my bank account was literally like it was negative in the red. You know, um, my my uh, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, was you know kind of on her last. I was on her last nerve about this whole insurance thing. She was like, yeah. "You need to start making some money so that like you can help pay this rent." Yes. And you know, I had had um, you know two cars repossessed in, in the previous two years, wow. um, and. It was, it was just, things had been rough and that was such a breath of fresh air. You know, it was like, okay, this, 
not only can I add value to others, but I get to have value come back to me. Mm-hmm. Now I can now I can move forward. And it, it's so just, good. you know, d- digging in from that point forward, uh, the next year uh, working here um, in, in this industry with the right group of people mm-hmm. then became just, uh, again, it was hard work. Yeah. But I, I was able to get in the flow. I was yes. able to find that that feeling of like, yeah, I can be happy while doing this yeah. uh, because I'm making an impact and I'm feeling the impact back to me. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, and do you still personally produce today? Yeah. You still yeah. do? Wow. I still do personally produce. Yeah, talk about that because I, uh, <laughs> I actually assumed you didn't. Mate, no. Honestly. Well, and um, I mean, I've definitely taken breaks as I've built yeah. my organization. Um, this move to virtual that we've done here over the last little bit uh, has caused me to say, okay, if I'm talking to agents about how to do this, I, I need Correct. to make sure that I'm doing it as well. That's cool. Um, and I've been able to find find a, a really good flow um, here lately where, you know, sitting in Puerto Rico, I say, should I reveal where my leads are? Yeah. No, that's, uh, so I get most of my leads now in the Houston area. Wow. So I get to sit in Puerto Rico. You know, I have a, a two hour time difference. So I, I'm able to do the work that I need to do uh, on a day to day basis and then knock out mm-hmm. three, four appointments in a day virtually. Yeah. Uh, and I'm writing more business now than I ever did, even at the peak wow. of my selling. Why is that? It's it's less time. Yeah. I don't have to drive from door to door. It's you know? easier. Um, so you're calling them and booking a Zoom appointment or call, going right call, into it? or Calling them. If, I, if they're in a place where they are ready to go right into it, we go right into it. Um, um, I've also started working. I have a call center uh, in Puerto nice. Rico that does uh, final expense sales. And we have five agents that are working out of there right now. We just got two more that just finally got their license to come nice. through. So they're getting ready to go online. But um, working with them and helping to get them trained, like I had to be on the phone and, you know, we're getting live transfers in. Yes. I don't know if you need a plug right there, but sure. uh, <laughs> yeah. Secure Agent Marketing live, we, live transfer leads. We're, we lo- we're loving those right now. Dude, thank um, you. That's awesome to hear. No, definitely. So, you know, getting on the phone and just going right into a final expense appointment. And now, you know, with uh, these quick issue policies with a lot of our core carriers, yes. you know, we're talking with the client. Here's your quote. All right. Give me a credit card, which is amazing, right? Like wow. a piece of check card, like they can pay for their their policy. And, you know, 30 minutes later, they're insured. They called wanting to get insured. Yeah. Um, and now we can move on to the next one. So, That's I mean, awesome. you can literally knock out five, six, seven applications in yeah. a, a, a eight hour period of time. Five years ago, like eight appointments, nine appointments, that's a, that's a week's worth of work Yeah, to set them up, to drive out. Like, I mean, I put yeah. miles on a car going to appointments. So it's, it's simpler. Like life insurance yes. has become simpler to, to acquire for clients than it has ever been. Clients are looking at last year, and for, uh, we only know first three quarters, but um, life insurance sales grew by 18% in 2021. Across the industry? Across the entire industry. 18%. Employee benefits life insurance grew last year by Which 21%. Which is wild because this businesses. Well, exactly. You would think you, that you went would think down. Because, you know, you're thinking there's this, what it, not the, um, what do they call it, the, the great resignation Right. Is that that's the, the, the terminology that people are, like where people are leaving jobs to go do their yeah. little side gigs and stuff like that. You would think that employee benefits life side of things would go down. Mm. It's gone up. People are wanting life insurance. Yes. People are more aware that mortality exists and they want to make sure that their, their families are prepared. Awesome. And so now, as we're getting people, you know, whether it's <clears throat> a, a direct mail lead, a live transfer lead, an online form fill lead, when we're calling, people are interested <laughs> they're like yeah. yeah tell tell me a little bit more about it. so if i if this happens you guys are going to okay, yep yeah, okay can i do this right yeah we can do it right now we knock it out and then we, we move on so like someone who's just only producing uh and i'm i'm excited for this to happen for our, our call center agent here soon because you know they're on the phone five days a week you know eight to ten hours a day depending on their yeah. schedule um and i can see some of them you know, four, five, six, seven sales a day, five days a week. Wow. Like, I I, I believe that's a possible. Day. I, 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 I do too, actually. I, I mean, I, I know of, like, I, I talk to other folks uh, yes. who are doing similar things that I'm doing on the call center side, um, who they have agents who have written 400, 500, 600, $800,000 a year, lat, like this past year, Correct. premium, just like on the phone. Yeah. So like, if that's, all you want to do, like you could sit at home and work two or three days a it's week amazing. and make an amazing income, 
help a lot of people get exactly what they're looking for, something that's going to continue their legacy in a positive way if something, not if, when, right? Yeah, We're talking yeah. about final expense. Yeah. When something happens to them, now their legacy gets to go on in a very positive way. Their family's not having to do a GoFundMe or put exactly. the little jar at the at the convenience store. Like we all see it. It's crazy. And like that doesn't have to have to, 50, $50 a month, $60 a month, and that does not have to happen, Yeah. right? And now you get to take a legacy forward in a positive way. Mm. And we as agents get to work in this industry and do that and make an amazing income, have time with our families, take care of our family, get life insurance yes. ourselves, uh, and take care of our families in an amazing way and show our children what's possible. Yeah. You know, so it's, I, it, it's, it's an amazing time for our industry. It, it, that's it's that's awesome. why, like, I mean, the question is like, why, why am I, why do I still go into the field? Because it, it's it's not that much time, yeah. right? And I'm doing an amazing thing for my, the clients that I'm working with, and I'm able to show and Being teach others yeah. how to do what we're doing. That's how you grow. Yes, you don't grow by you know sitting back on your couch and pointing people and saying you know <laughs> take us here. Right. Mm. That's those those tyrants usually get disposed of. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's what's happened throughout history. Whenever you look at people who that's how they just decide to leave. Correct. Right. So they do eventually. That, that's yeah. that's what's amazing about what we have at our fingertips. Yeah. Uh, in, in our industry. It's insane. Right now. Yeah. I, this is what's crazy. Is I, I've got still so many questions. This thing could go hours. <laughs> I mean, we're at like we're at 50 minutes exactly. And this has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm going to skip and ask. You, you mentioned something earlier. Well, real quick, before I get there, um, how many agents are you working with? How big is your organization? Whatever you're willing to share. Uh, so nationwide on our in our independent channel, uh, what I'm doing with uh, Symmetry Finance Group and Quality Insurance, we have around 700 writing agents a month. That's awesome. Um, call center wise, uh, like I said, we're uh, just getting that up and running and started. We're up to seven agents now. Um, but I know with, uh, with, with what has happened here just in the last month, or so, uh, cool. I, I see a big explosion getting ready to happen there. So I'm, wow. I'm excited about that. That's huge. Um, you mentioned something at the very beginning. You mentioned what you were going for, like where you were going, where, you know what I mean? Like, um, I have a, I have a hunch that there's a clear, fairly clear vision of where you want this thing to get to. I'm not saying you got, I don't, I'm not saying you got to spoil it all and get specific, <laughs> but where's this thing going for you? Um, I think for for me right now, the biggest vision that I have for what my insurance business is going to do for my overall company is is to allow me to create uh, this family office environment for my mm. clients. You know, that's become a, a big driving force. You know, I've, I've gone back and looked over uh, the eleven years that I've worked with uh, uh, Symmetry Financial Group uh, and Quality Insurance. I have a, a book of business throughout myself and all of my agents of a little over 110,000 clients, wow. right? And I know that from a life insurance standpoint, and that's what's still on the books, right? There's obviously been a lot of stuff over the years that, that falls off the books, that's right? Crazy. Like that, that happens. Yeah. Um, and I know one of the reasons that that happens is because we're not fully engaging our clients in their in a holistic life mm -hmm. plan, right? Their, their full financial plan. So what I see and what I'm working on building is where, you know, yes, we're taking care of their insurance, but we're also helping them make sure that retirement is secure and that the legacy that they are planning on leaving, leaving that it actually grows, right? Yeah. Because it doesn't matter if I just leave some money to some folks and then they go waste that money. Like the, the legacy has to continue. The next generation has to be in a better place. And I want to have an organization that when that next generation's time comes, right? Like we're going through this process where baby boomers are transferring for, transferring anywhere from 24, the, the sure. numbers are ridiculous, uh, so no one knows exactly how much it is, but between 24 and $40 trillion of wealth is supposed to be transferred by baby boomers wow. to subsequent, you know, our millennials, trillennials, zillennials, yeah, yeah. whatever what, they call what, them. Whatever we call everybody that wasn't born during, you know, during the, the greatest generation or, or whatever, yeah. or whatever the baby boomers are called. But like, that has to be the next step a lot of money. and the next evolution for our industry is it's not just about selling a life insurance policy, but how can we help families move their financial future into mm. a brighter spot, right? Like it's not just about like, I'm doing the same thing mom and dad did because no parent wants their kid, like no matter where you are, 
no parent wants their child to be in the exact same place as they are. Or let me say this, no good parent, yeah. right? You want your, your children to be in a better state, a better position. Uh, and that's what our industry can help to create. Like that exists, this whole idea. I learned about family offices as I started to acquire wealth, right? Like, you yeah. know, I got people, hey, we have a family office and we see that you're doing such and such or here's your, your net worth is this and we're willing to take you on as a client. Like, no, thank you. Um, because like they're just targeting, right? You have to have a certain amount of net worth, but mm -hmm. like that, the same planning that's happening for those people can happen at any level. And you can make this thing into this generational growth engine. Yes. If we set it up in the right, right way. Yeah. And so that's what it's not. There's definitely, I have certain, you know, target numbers and things that have to happen in order for us to be able to invest in the infrastructure and, yep. and what needs to happen. But it's less about target numbers from an income or a revenue standpoint and more about can we create this thing? Can yeah. we create something where we're able to combine insurance, financial planning, proper financial planning, mm -hmm. uh, banking, legal, right? Because wills and trusts wow. has to yeah. come into it. Accounting has to come into it because as families gain that wealth, they need to know how to best protect from a tax True. standpoint and 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 pass it on in the in the best possible Which way. Which is probably why you've done some real estate along the way. That's <laughs> why real estate is a part of the process, right? Like all these things, like I, I just looked at what other wealthy families are doing. Yeah. And it's like, how can we, how do you bring that down from having it be $50 million net worth in order to even participate that and allow for someone who's making 50 or $100,000 a year to start, maybe they don't get to see wow. the end game of it. So they it, got some access. In right, yeah. but they can get access to that. They can start, and maybe they won't be the ones who cross the finish line, right? Like they may not reach yep. the promised land, but they start the journey. Somebody has to start the journey. Yes. Somebody has to start the journey. And, and most people don't start the journey because they don't think they can get there. They can, can't see it, right? Yeah. And we can, we're in a very great spot from an industry's perspective to be able to tell a lot of people in this country, you can get there, yeah, right? Or you can start your family on a path to get there. And most of this, you know, the, these, this you call it generational curse or, or, mm -hmm. or whatever like it it stays in that way because no one is willing to educate people about what's possible uh and provide them with a path and show them a vision uh, and then get them to buy into it like i'm not saying everybody's gonna buy into it sure. but there are a lot of people who are hungry for stuff like this they yes. do want their their children to have and their grandchildren to be in a better place and we can help them get started with that and there's very yeah. that's not happening in our industry right now like we're, we're, it's all about Okay, here's a here's a term life insurance policy. Correct. You're covered. Uh, talk to you. Never, right? Like that's you, you, in a year. <laughs> yeah, sure. With policy review time, which never happens, right? Yeah, so yeah. if we can really engage with clients, and and that's what I'm I'm looking to build, uh, and what I'm excited about. That's that's what continues to drive me and move me forward uh, in this industry, and mm -hmm. and what. I'm that's just, cool. I'm so excited. I, I'm excited that I can we feel have, it. You guys can feel it too, can't you? Like the uh, energy. We just, we, we have this, this, this capability, yeah. right? And, and, and I hope more people will say, all right, let's, 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 let's go. Mm -hmm. Let, let's, let's do this thing. Because by us, those of us who help build this yeah. are going to be rewarded extremely well for it. Totally. Like what you're doing right now by be, giving access to this kind of information and training, Excellent. you're going to be able to, to feel the value added back from that because we're going somewhere yes. and, and where we're going is a place that's going to add a lot of value back to our clientele. And whether we talk about millions, billions or trillions of dollars that are moving around, mm. like some of that has to stay with us, yeah. right? In order to help them do what they need to do. And in that process, the clients that we serve are going to become wealthier from it. Yeah. And we will, we will be moving right, right there along with it. The, pe crazy. the person that adds the most value is the one who gets the most value returned back to him. Yes, yes, dude. The way you, the way you think is like on another level, man. I got a lot. I got, I got, I got eight years to, to, to like evolve like 40, <laughs> 48 times to, to catch up to you. But you know, I mean, dude, you, 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 this has been amazing. Um, is there an airplane or a jet in your future? <laughs> Um, or do you, I'm surprised there's not like a partnership. There's partnerships. There, in Puerto there, there Rico. are partnerships. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, have you, have I, you I've, I've definitely, it? I've definitely done my fair share of. I, I think that was one uh, a, a pinnacle moment for me in my my insurance career was when I was able to book my first private flight yeah. and, and fly myself and some my my, my leaders around uh, for some tours and stuff that we've done. That's but, cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, somewhere in the future, uh, yeah. I, I have some. Is some there other a number places. or like I'm not saying you're gonna share it, but is there like a 
point in your brain to where, all right, I'll do it. Or not, or not really. Yeah, there's, I don't think there's a point. There's okay, not a point okay. just yet. I mean, it, it, it really becomes a, a utility thing, right? Like yeah. when, when the time I spent like in the airport going through this Correct. and the other, you know, when, when that's costing me too much, I just need yeah. to get there and get back. Uh, I think as my kids get older, that's going to be another one of the driving forces of that because that's what, you know, the whole like flying private, it's, it yeah. just buys you time. It's time. Right? It buys you time. And, and eventually you can say, yeah, my time is worth Twenty thousand yeah. an hour, fifty thousand yeah. an hour, hundred thousand dollars an hour. Like there yes. comes a point where, yeah, the the trade off makes a whole bunch of sense. Correct. Right now, you know, I got TSA pre check. I, I fly first class <laughs> most of the time, so you know, I'm, I'm pretty good for right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Well, you've been absolutely phenomenal. What you're doing for the industry is amazing. What you've done for a lot of people, agents, families, is remarkable. As I'm writing on a remarkable tablet here, um, so thank you for everything you've done for the industry. And thank you for your time that you've shared here today. Yes, sir. Anytime. Yeah. And I appreciate you. We're about to literally launch 8% Virtual in the, tomorrow. We're here at the Hilton Garden, by the way. I didn't share that in Springfield, Missouri. And the virtual conference is literally in the ballroom next door. We're hanging out here. We got Edward Pritchett all the way from Puerto Rico to Missouri. And it's cold. It is. It's what, what, what was it when you left Puerto Rico yesterday? It was, it was definitely like 85. 85, 85 and degrees. Sunny, and it's like 22 this morning. 25 right 25 now. right now we dropped 60 degrees today man <laughs> right for you it's like it's like that is, that was like a shock. I'm, sta I'm standing inside yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if i'm leaving this building i don't I, blame I, you <laughs> i don't blame you well thank you for being on the power player podcast appreciate yes, you yes sir i'm loving the relationship where it's going this dude is an amazing individual make sure you reach out to him follow him how, how can they learn more about you if they don't know already know you um Follow me on Instagram, the Edward Pritchett. I'm glad I was able to get that one. Um, obviously, Facebook, uh, you know, our yeah. website, PritchettAgency.com. Come check us out. I love it. Always uh, happy to reach out. Boom. Thank you, brother. We'll throw all that in the description. Thank you again. Appreciate your time. Okay. Thanks for listening to the CA Power Players podcast. Another amazing interview with the Edward Pritchett. Go check him out. We'll see you every Friday at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. Appreciate you guys for tuning in, listening, and always wanting to think bigger like Edward, have a bigger vision and help people in a bigger way. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. And you know what's so refreshing? You know, talking to people now, it is attractive because they don't have to be driving around, you know, three, four days out in the field um, and getting no-showed and, and um, you know, having all these.